first question. <laughs> yeah, we have some great questions. Hi, everyone. I'm Siobhan Sarna. Welcome to our food marble exploration about the Air 2. What is this? this is a handheld breath testing device where you're going to be able to check fermentation levels. You're going to be able to check in the very near future how supplements are responding, how different treatments are responding, because there's some updates that we're going to be giving you today. Uh, my name is Siobhan Sarna. I founded SIBO SOS. I wrote the book Healing SIBO. I've done nine uh, summits, including the docuseries Digestion SOS Rescue and Relief for IBS, SIBO, and Leaky Gut. My colleague and dear, dear friend, Dr. Allison Seebecker, and my co-host for today is here. Hi, Dr. Seebecker. Hi, everyone. Welcome. You know Dr. Seebecker from the course uh, SIBO Recovery Roadmap, from her website, SIBOinfo.com, from her conferences, from working with the SIBO SOS summits, and on and on and on. The way that you would work with Dr. Seebecker typically online in the past was through, you know, Teledoc, telemedicine, she was a pioneer in that. But right now she is in what I call deep cabin mode, writing her book on SIBO. So we're very excited and in anticipation of that. And Dr. Seebecker and I are so pleased to be able to co-host this webinar for you all. Now, the other, um, the other players here on your screen are, of course, our background helpmate, Clarissa. Shout out to you, my friend. Um, she is here and is going to be in chat to answer your questions. I will put on subtitles. Thanks for the reminder. The subtitles are apparently hysterical and sort of awful, and they say my name is like a cuss word. So occasionally, don't worry about it, but do what you can. Have it help if it helps. Great. So we also have Dr. Josh Goldenberg here, who is the hello, the person who's taking over for Dr. C. Becker's practice while Dr. C. Becker is writing her book, The Referring Doctor. And uh, we have the pleasure of having him do a recent masterclass on the topic of food marble and how he's using it clinically. And the title was, is it a game changer? The answer is yes. And it's great to have you here, Josh. I invited him back with Dr. C. Becker to answer more questions because sometimes when you get into cutting edge technology, the information leads to, wow, what about this? What about this? What about this? Like more and more questions. So um, he is renowned for his research and um, deeply respected within this community. So it's great to have you here, Dr. Goldenberg. Thank you. And then we have Claire Short, who is up there looking very wise. And Claire was just telling us about her background before we started rolling and recording. So would you just do a recap of that? Because it's so interesting. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, hi, everybody. Um, so my background is in microbiology. I have a PhD in infection biology. And the bacteria I focused on mostly was Campylobacter jejuni. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, a lot of people here will be familiar with that bacteria as it's associated with the development of post-infectious IBS. So it's a very smart bacteria and it does a lot of damage in the gut. Um, so after my PhD, I moved to New York and I wanted to kind of get a better understanding of human biology. So I, I joined a human biology lab where I studied inflammation for about four years before returning to Ireland and joining Food Marble, where I've been for the last over four years now, kind of leading all the scientific activities and clinical activities in the company. So that's my background. Awesome. Thank you so much. And you are the sister of Angus Short. Oh, Hi. Okay. Hi, Angus, by the way. Hi. <laughs> Angus, yes. uh, we love also having your team members here, Anya and Barry, who are from the clinical staff at uh, Food Marble, and they're going to be on tap to answer some you know, clinical type questions, a little bit behind the scenes today. So I'm actually just for visual overload, going to ask you all to hide yourselves, even though we love you and you're beautiful. Um, when we have some questions that you feel like you can answer, then go ahead and type in. But please do, as our participants, our beloved participants, do keep your questions for the Q&A box, because it is very busy and we do not want to um, diffuse the not everybody hide I met Anya and Barry come back <laughs> come back Angus so tell us about Allison go back Barry I'm hiding you okay Angus um so tell us how food marble came to be in your you know elevator pitch about how that all started sure uh thanks Vaughn yeah it was actually my my wife who's my my girlfriend at the time um she'd been struggling with digestive issues for a number of years and 
she'd been through a process b- between uh, her, uh, you know, her family physician, uh, her gastroenterologist, um, dietitian, and you know she wants to get any better. And for me, I came across breath testing via some of the work that was being done um, via the guys at Monash on the low FODMAP diet. And uh, at the time, I just wanted to see, you know, could I could I actually make a device that could be used to measure these gases on the breath uh, for grace? And so, you know, it initially started out as a prototype to see if I could help grace. And um, yeah, even though what I had was at that time was very basic, um, you could see that it could be helpful for her. So that's kind of where it started. And since then, we've you know, now we're like a company of over 25 people. And, you know, we've we've two generations of consumer devices and two generations of medical devices as well. So um, we've, we've came a long way and really the goal for us is to be able to make it possible for people to be able to manage these conditions um, uh, either with them uh, on their own or with, with the help of a practitioner. Um, and, you know, we, we think both both are good approaches and ideally if you can get a really good practitioner but uh yeah, yeah. it's just really to, to to put the technology in the hands of the people who, who have these issues and uh, because we know it's these are the sorts of issues that haven't necessarily been that well catered for um in in healthcare sometimes so so yeah that's 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 our mission well, you're hearing an amen from the crowd for sure, because everybody can appreciate how they have been frustrated at one stage or another. Maybe they do have an amazing practitioner, but just sometimes getting that question answered or getting into the appointment, or they can't find that practitioner. And of course, finances are always an issue. So yes, it's very it's exciting to have a tool that can help with your practitioner. We're always huge fans of that as well as in addition to and on your own and in between visits. So Dr. Seebecker and I have been fascinated with this technology. Allison, when you and I were talking about it, you were like, oh my gosh, (laughs) I didn't think about the possibilities. You even helped to fund them in the beginning with uh, like a GoFundMe campaign. You're so, you're so advocating for us, even putting your money where your mouth is, no pun intended. You know, that was so exciting, you guys. And and I got to pick my color or put put in an idea for a color or something. It was when you were doing, you're starting up. It was great. (laughs) Well, I, I know that um, I know that we've all been waiting to see how this technology can impact all of us as patients and practitioners for sure. So, Josh, I wanted to see how it was working for you in your practice, and then um, after, and we're just going to sort of freeform here. But at some point, we are also sooner rather than later going to exactly go through step by step how to use the device, and we'll get to your questions. Uh, but I'm hoping to answer as many of those questions beforehand, simply from the content that we're going to be delving into. So Dr. Goldenberg, how are you using it in your practice? Um, well, like you said, I, I really do think it is a game changer. I I use it in a lot of different ways and I'm playing with new ones every, all the time, um, which is really exciting. But I would say big picture, I'm using it for formal SIBO testing and, and food marble and and um, Claire can talk about this, has, has formal studies comparing it to the gold standard on that. So I'm using it for formal SIBO testing. I'm using it for formal lactose and fructose malabsorption testing. I'm using it for tracking response to treatment. I'm using it for food response that isn't SIBO related, sort of large intestinal malfermentation. Um, I also, um, and actually you may laugh at this, but like it's a thing is once people are in remission, they're terrified of a relapse. And so um, what I have them do is buy one of these and just put it in their drawer. <laughs> and so at the first sign of, of symptoms where they're really, really worried and normally they'd have to wait to chat with me and order a new test and all this delay and all this time they're worrying that the SIBOs come back, they just grab it and, and do a quick test and, and tag me in. Um, And just knowing that it's there, I think has been helpful for them um, as well. So yeah, so I'm using it for all sorts of things and, and having a blast. (laughs) Great. That's so great. Okay. Thank you. And so what's some of the feedback from some of your patients? And then we're going to talk about how to use it as a patient. Yeah. So usually the response is like, um, initially it's like, this is so much fun. (laughs) That's usually the first feedback. Because you can do like, and you'll, we'll get into this, I'm sure, but like you can do a zillion um, breath tests. So I use it very formally for all these clinical things, but 
um, once you know the patient gets it, they they just have a blast with it because they can do like up to hundreds of tests and um, they're learning how their body works a little bit better and how their digestion works. And, um, you know, that's exciting um, for biohackers and patients, you know, in, in total. So um, anyway, so they, they usually find it pretty fun. And, um, and then just the convenience of being able to, because normally when like, I really want to do a repeat test to see where they're at, and then it's a question about extra cost and time. I think they're really loving that they can just do a test and get the results right away. Josh, I didn't do the best job ever in introducing you. Would you just go over your bio a little bit for us, please? Uh, sure. Yeah. So um, I uh, so uh, lots of different hats, but in short, uh, so I'm a teacher. My main focus is evidence informed practice, evidence based medicine, um, and evidence synthesis. I'm a researcher, so um, meta. I'm a meta analyst. So most of my job is combining evidence and doing evidence synthesis and popping out the, the take home message, if you will. Um, and then clinically, I I see patients. I'm covering for uh, Dr. Seebecker, and um, I see patients mostly with uh, IBS and, and SIBO. Dr. Seebecker, do you want to talk about how much he's respected within the community? <laughs> <laughs> Hugely, um, because we all especially need help, most of us clinicians, in understanding and interpreting research. And Josh is a researcher. You have like a sub or additional degree in research along with your um, naturopathic physician degree. I don't know what it's called, but I know you have it. <laughs> And so he has been teaching us for a very long time now how to understand studies. And so we all just respect him so much. We revere him. If Josh says this evidence, he feels good about it or he's comfortable with it, then we know it's good. Cool. Hey, I just heard you say that about Dr. Dr. Gervich was asking about it and you were like, yeah, but Josh said. Josh <laughs> says. Like, oh. And she's like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about how someone would use the device. Can Claire and Angus, I know you have one right there. Can you just hold it up and show everybody? It's like, it's just this cutie little thing. And you, how, how do you use it? You would blow into it. Let's say someone wants to, so there are two ways. Let me, someone to correct me if I'm wrong. I'm going to say something and then someone correct me if I'm wrong. Drew will all enjoy that. So there are two ways at least to use this. And Josh, you were just talking about it. One is to track uh, food intolerances. And, you know, SIBO and EMO cause a lot of food intolerances. So if you do it before you clear your SIBO EMO, it's probably going to be like Mr. Toad's wild ride. And if you just use it for tracking your gas levels for SIBO and EMO, then after you clear those conditions, it's perfection for testing your food intolerances. Is that, do you feel confident in that whole idea and concept? Is that a good approach? Anyone? Yeah, well, just even from from, from our perspective, um, certainly if, if, if you, you've been diagnosed as SIBO or EMO or if that's suspected, you know, it's good to try and clear that first, um, you know, ideally with your practitioner. And, you know, once, you, once you've cleared that up, um, it's then it's then much easier to to identify food intolerances because you know if you've got if you've got SIBO or EMO, you know uh, almost anything you 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 eat or drink will you know will often provoke significant fermentation because it, you know uh, for different reasons. But uh, so it's it's hard to unpick food intolerances at that point. But once you've cleared it, that's a better time to to look at are some of these specific. Uh, FODMAP components or fermentable uh, components, are they causing an issue? Okay, yeah. Claire, I, you make a comment? Yeah, yeah, sure. And I think if someone has SIBO and they know they, they suspect certain foods are triggering their symptoms while they're clearing the SIBO, they can definitely use the device kind of day to day by logging their meals. And then, so for example, log your breakfast, wait 30 minutes um, or an hour, depending on how fast your digestion is and you can take a breath test kind of every hour for three hours after each meal and then that way then you can see if that meal and the components in that meal are triggering kind of excess gas for you that being said once your SIBO is cleared I definitely would go back and check the individual sugars one by one to ensure you're not over restricting your diet because I think you know that's something that's very important and it's kind of a message we always want to communicate we want to use our device to kind of increase diet diversity rather than kind of restrict 
but while you're being treated it's good to kind of identify what's triggering your symptoms while you're kind of going through that kind of treatment plan Awesome. Fantastic. And Josh, you do that, uh, I, everything we've just talked about, I know, but now also that whole idea about the prevention in, you know, helping people to like not freak out or to take action is a great idea. I hadn't really thought about it in that like way before. So I'm so glad you said that. Isabella is saying, I'm both a practitioner, practitioner and patient waiting for my device. And thanks to you guys set up the portal and it was pain-free. I would like to learn how to see on the clinician portal. So we are, this is a mixed audience. We have both patients and practitioners. And is there a benefit, Josh, are you seeing people in person or are you just telemedicine? I'm full telemedicine now. Okay. Some people were asking, they have their own practices where actually patients come in physically. Um, is there a benefit to having a practitioner have a device in the office to do like a spot check with a patient? Oh, that's an interesting idea. Um, yeah, I would, I would, well, I don't know about, you'd have to clear it. And then, you know, I don't know about contamination with germs and there'd be all those issues. So you'd have to get sort of a mouthpiece oh, yeah. maybe. And yeah. then also, and maybe um, Clara Angus can talk to this. Um, sorry, the doctor's short. <laughs> um, sure. So uh, is if you're, if it's a continuous use device, I know it's standardized in, in the manufacturing facility, but, and, but there's sort of a fear of of drift, which I know you guys track, but my suspicion would be the closer it is to manufacturing, the cleaner it is clinically. So um, how would you feel about having a in-office device, which is doing like hundreds and hundreds of tests with different people then? I actually think there'd probably be less tests in office because all of us are using it so frequently in our daily lives, you know, like, oh, I just had some popcorn. Yeah, the, the um, main you know, thing for yeah, the main thing for us uh, would just be, you know, to get the, the longest life out of any device is not to do too many breath tests in one day. So we say to people, you know, um, you know, try to keep it, um, you know, uh, below about 10 or 12. Like, like if you're doing a challenge, that's going to be like 12 or 13 breath tests. But, you know, day to day for a given device, if it's, if it's only been used five, five, 10 times, th that's where it's going to last as long as possible. Um, so yeah, we definitely suggest that from, from, from that perspective. Yeah. And kind of one more point on kind of extending the life, um, when breathing into the device, breathe as gently as possible. You get the most accurate reading because then you get to measure the very end of your breath and that's really what you want to measure, but also it reduces the amount of condensation that goes into the device. So breathing gently and consistently into the device definitely will increase the life but I've had my first generation device since I joined Food Marble and it still works perfectly. Um, so yeah, definitely it does have a life, long lifespan, but I suppose to Josh's point about sanitizing between patients, that's definitely something that we haven't really looked at. Yeah, well, I guess the, the mouthpiece on the front of the device can be clipped off and, you know, you can clean that down in, you know, just soap and water or like, you know, uh, if you want to just clean the mouthpiece, but yeah, it's, it's not something, um, you know, uh, we're aware of people doing before, but it's, yeah, just, I guess, whatever, um, you know, you think is suitable in terms of just, you know, uh, germs and that sort of thing would be important to use your common sense, which and, I and just a quick follow-up question on that for Claire and, and Angus. So is what it would the tracking for drift get thrown if it's different users like are you don't have to tell us what your black box is but if you're constantly doing different it's not the same person over time so does that throw your ability to track to see if it's no like no no that wouldn't be that wouldn't be a factor no okay no. thanks so angus you have some announcements a little bit ahead of ourselves on this but i i wanted to for because some people have come to the two other sessions we've done on food marble um and some of you are brand new and you know semi-educated by maybe looking at the site or whatever, but um, you have some updates of what is to come as early as next month. And if you already have the device, you're grandfathered in on this. And if you decided to get a device, which by the way, we have the lowest price anywhere with our coupon code. I arm wrestled with them for the lowest price anywhere. <laughs> and they were very kind to share that with us. And, and Clarissa is putting it in the chat. Um, you if you do have the device or you're getting the device right now, you are grandfathered into these app upgrades automatically, correct? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So it's not like if they do something new to the app, which is what is interfacing with the device, 
you're going to have to like pay to get the upgrade. So that's, we love that. And um, Angus had a couple of announcements about what is coming in, as I like to say, what's coming in hot. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd be glad to um, to just do a, I can do a share screen here and, and go through a couple of those. And there's, there's some other updates that are coming, uh, you know, uh, really soon, like that I'm, I don't mention here. So we're all the time trying to improve what we can show to people. Um, like in, in the Q&A, somebody asked about meal logging. We're vastly expanding the amount of foods that you can log. Um, so so we, we've got some you know, pretty sophisticated technology now to be able to enable people to, to uh, scan a barcode in a supermarket um, or to search for different types of branded foods as well uh, so that you can log them and we can give you an estimate of the FODMAP composition because for us, it's very it's very important to know what's in the food. We it's not like it's not like um, a lot of food tracking apps where you just kind of need to know the calories or the you know the the protein content or whatever it is. For us, we need to know is there anything there that's going to ferment into gases um, right. when you eat it. So so we've built a technology to we already have tons and tons of like non-branded foods, like anything you'd imagine in a grocery store without a barcode on it, we can do that already. So lots yeah. of fruits, veg, nuts, seeds, all that stuff. Are, but you, this one, are you forwarding your slides? Because we only see the front slide. Yeah. So I, okay. I, I, yeah, so I, I am, but um, that's just one I don't cover in here. So no, no, no. we only see your food marble, navy blue slide, Angus. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so okay. I'm, I, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll flick through, but I, I didn't cover in this slideshow. I didn't cover the 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 that extra food meal logging okay. aspect, awesome. but uh, that's that's coming soon. Okay, great. Um, yeah. So one of the things that people have been asking for is the ability to be able to track medications and supplements. So especially if they're working with a practitioner, um, to be able to track um, different things that they're consuming that might relate to uh, uh, you know their journey with uh, SIBO or IBS or, or or just understanding their their digestion. So people will be able to um, log different supplements and medications. They can also set reminders. So if they want, if, if they don't, you know, just to ensure they don't miss um, any any particular dose that they need to take. And so this will be coming out early September. So I've got a few screenshots. Um, you in the menu, you'll now see it in this. Um, in the menu, you'll see the option to log medications and supplements. Um, in, in when you go into that screen, it will show you stuff you've logged before. So in this example, I've got a few things in here that that, um, that you know the person has logged before. But you can also do a search. So when you tap on search here, that will bring you through. And and in this example, I typed in gas, and it, it's showing some uh, products that have gas in the name. We'll basically have a database of different medications and supplements. So just to make it really easy for you to find what you want. And if it's not there, you can create um, basically a custom entry. So you can you can uh, you can provide the, the, the name of what it is that you're you're taking as well. OK, this is very exciting for me personally, because I am not the most compliant human being. And for me to be able to finally get direct feedback and me not think it's a, in my imagination is going to be huge. I'm yes. so excited about that. And also the reminder thing. Thank you. Because I have yes. all these apps that are just reminders. I have my phone alarm, blah, blah, blah. I have notes and sticky notes everywhere. I have caps on the tops of supplement bottles that have an alarm on them. So thank you. <laughs> that is fantastic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, and and here's like in the trend section, because I know many people who are looking at this from a SIBO perspective, they're looking at the trend section and they're looking at their, their breath readings over time. There'll also be a little section in there to show you uh, your medications. So uh, to keep it simple, you know, I, I'm assuming this person ha is um, is like logging a few different types of medications. So the first letter of the medication will appear in a little dot. You might see here all these X's here. So that's this person's uh, taking a, a course as Ifaxan. And, you know, when you tap on the dot, you'll see a label to tell you what it is. So they're having Zyfaxan and uh, cultural and there's also buscopan in there so just three different um medications that they're um they're working through um so that's the first thing i wanted to show the second so, thing how many medications and supplements can we put in there as much as you like it, you know it, it you know the more that's in there 
like the harder it might be to, to, to see everything, but there can be multiple things on the same day and it will, they'll just stack up on top of each other. So in this example, um, that on, on a particular day, they logged the facts and, and cultural. And so when you tap on it on, on the dot itself, you'll see all the different medications you logged on that day. Um, and it, in the day, in the, in the view for your actual day, it will be easier to see because it's not as compressed a space. Uh, what does the B stand for there? That's actually buscopan. So that's a different medication. Oh, okay, yeah. gotcha. Oh, the X is for Zyfaxan. I'm with you. Okay, great. Yeah. Uh, we were going to use different colors, but we thought it might get a bit uh, complicated to look at if you're seeing all these different colors at the same time. So, um, but very open to to your to everyone's feedback on uh, on any of these features. Okay, great. And we're going to talk ab ab about, I see some of the questions coming in the chat. Isabel and Mich Micheline, please put them in the Q&A. Put your questions in the Q&A box and we will get to them. Okay, that's yes. very cool, I guess. Thank you. Yeah, the next one. So this is something that um, some people, especially uh, where, where people are, are, you know, tracking their SIBO over time and they, they want to kind of see specifically what are my hydrogen levels what are my methane levels because right now we combine them together uh, into a fermentation score and in terms of hydrogen and methane you're seeing that the share of of each so you're seeing the proportions of each that are in the sample so um so we currently we have we have that fermentation score from zero to ten uh, it combines both hydrogen and methane and it's showing you that the, the proportions of each um, and, and it shows you the total. So that's, I, I've got a screenshot, which will make that a little clearer in the next slide, but we're, we're, we're implementing a second approach where you can split them into, you can split them out into two. So that will make it much easier for people to be able to, if they want to just focus on methane or they want to just focus on hydrogen, they can do that. So we're planning to launch this in September. And so here's kind of what it looks like today. So, um, the meals are the green, uh, kind of pillars there those green columns so that's the, you know relates to the amount of fob maps in the meal but uh like what you see here is the the light color uh the light blue color that's hydrogen and the darker blue color is methane and the line is the total fermentation score so um so, so basically you what you're seeing there is that, that like what's the proportions of each so you can see hydrogen is a much bigger proportion for this person like initially it's about 50 50 but then like towards the the middle of the later part of the day it's probably something like three quarters hydrogen they're producing um so the the only place where this kind of gets really tricky is where like we like when we initially launched the device we kind of um we basically capped uh, the levels so that, you know, once you got up above a certain level, it, you know, it couldn't get any higher than 10. And um, so we wanted to make it possible for people to see um, the difference between like high levels and very high levels. So once you get above about eight on the fermentation score, it, it basically increases less quickly. So, um, uh, Siobhan gave a great um, uh, example of, or uh, analogy of this. It's like when you're blowing up a balloon, like it's easy at first, but then towards the end, it gets harder and harder. So once you get above about eight fermentation score, the levels do rise more slowly. Um, so, so that's something to bear in mind. But I'll show you an example of what, it, what this can change to. So if you click that little kind of gear icon that little settings icon on the top right of the of the the breath uh, screen there yeah. it will bring up this menu and so you can switch between combined or stacked and separate so it combines what we have today separates the new uh the new way uh that you the new mode you can enable and so uh, you can you'll see now when they're separate it's not about the proportions anymore. It is just showing you a separate fermentation score for both. And like one effect of this is the, like it's much less likely to get up to about eight or 10. So, so it's much, it's, it's actually much simpler. So um, it's like the same result interpreted differently. So it's easier to understand. Exactly. Exactly. I'll show, I'll show an example for, so if you, if you go into the trend section, this is what it looks like today. We've got the week, uh, we've got the, the week on the left, and we've got the month 
view on the right so the month view cover in like like a whole month and uh -huh. um, when they're separated out they'll look a bit different like it means hydrogen can be or methane can get higher than hydrogen it just depends on which is higher and you know uh, but but it, it just means if you want to track one of those you can um nice. yeah so so that, that kind of that kind of makes it much simpler uh for you know for people who really want to zero in on one of the gases in particular um and there is some rules at thumb about being able to uh you know convert into into ppms if, if you want to do that so um that's uh that should that should help i i think uh people so formula yeah yeah so 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 that's kind of the end of the slideshow but i just okay. wanted to share share those features no that, that's very exciting thank you and what that also says to me is you know this is new and you guys are developing new upgrades to it all the time and new ways to use it and listening to people like Dr. Goldenberg and going, oh, OK, that's a good idea. And listening to your you know, patients and practitioners. So it's very exciting. And um, what I also wanted to say, if you all wanted to try the device, get the device today with our coupon, which is floating around in the chat, it's 16 percent off. And um, you also, if you send to info at SIBO SOS, get Dr. Allison Seebecker's award-winning naturopath, SIBO specialist, Dr. Allison Seebecker, her underlying causes masterclass, um, which a lot of you all did. Thank you so much for that. I'm so glad you have that information um, during the last session we did together. So as a gift with purchase, um, we are giving you the underlying causes masterclass, which is phenomenal. And there are a lot of people that just bought that separately for either $59 or $99, depending if we had it on sale. So literally hundreds over the years that, that we've been offering it. So wanted to explain that. And then also Dr. Goldenberg's phenomenal presentation that he did a couple of weeks ago, that is coming down off of our free sites. And in the future will be either $59 or $99, depending on if you get it during our specials. So with the purchase of an Air 2 now, we will be including that as well. So it's a beautiful combination of training and also addressing underlying causes. So that's coming up and um, that's a possibility for you. So Noosh is asking this question, even though I'm not supposed to be looking at the chat, which is, can you diagnose SIBO with this? That is not the intent of the device. However, I do have um, some anecdotes of where people have you know, figured out that they have SIBO from this. Now, we love Jamelli Labs. We love Dr. Pimentel. We love um, Trio Smart. And so if you want all three breath tests done and sort of that gold standard of what's been validated, then Trio Smart is a phenomenal way to go. Shout out, Ani. And then you could use, for example, the food marble in between times to see how your gas is doing. Anecdotally, um, we do have some people who have, through a challenge um, setting in the app, done their own little informal uh, breath test where they did the diet, which is you know the same as you would do with the lab, did the 12 hour fast, took the substrate, and then did every 15 minutes for their three hours. And so that is possible. That's not the intent of the device. Some people have been using it that way, sort of off label. And so I wanted to share that with you in full disclosure of both ways. So, well, and also this is how Josh has been using it. Of course, he's not a patient, he's a practitioner. Right, right. And, and Dr. Seebecker and I were also talking about the financial ramifications of using the, um, the air too, because it's incredible. Like for, for me, for patients who are dealing with, they've done the IBS smart test at Jamelli labs, they realize that they have the antibodies. So from food poisoning, so they have the post-infectious IBS and, you know, we, depending on what's going on in life and, did I have another bout of food poisoning and ebbing and flowing? I love the idea of being able to check gas levels and oh, darn it, I forgot to do my percalipride twice last week. Can you believe it? What is happening? So, you know, just to get some feedback from gas levels, I think is, is phenomenal. So you all will decide how you're going to use this for yourself. And that's some of the freedom about this device. Now, additionally, they do have a kit for example, remember food, SIBO and EMO cause food intolerances. So 
it's it I'm glad we're clarifying that and Dr. Seebecker and I've talked about this for example with Dr. Harlack um as well that was a really cool video we did with him earlier in the year um but just about how food intolerances tend to clear up after your SIBO is an emo is cleared so then that's the perfect time to do the food intolerance testing that uh the air chew also provides and can Angus or Claire or Josh, how you how Josh, do you use the food intolerance um substrates of like the lactose, not to be confused with lactulose, and <laughs> yeah, fructose, et cetera, in your practice? Yeah, I used to. Um, so you, you know, you can formally use those for SIBO as well, as well as lactose and fructose intolerance, those in particular. So yeah, I I um especially early on, I was having people, they have a little intolerance kit where you can get the four different um packages. And they're dosed appropriate, like lactose and fructose are dosed the way you would use to look at lactose and fructose intolerance. So it's, it's kind of set up perfectly to just to just use that. So yeah, I, I do. Mm -hmm. Cool. Very cool. Um, someone's asking if Dr. Seebecker and I own Food Marble and therefore share in financial returns. No, um, we are affiliates. So if you do purchase through our links in full disclosure, um, we would receive a small percentage. It does not affect your price of purchase. Instead, actually, I was able to negotiate the lowest price anywhere um, because of that. And we love it when you're financial because Dr. Seebecker and I do so many things for free and we need to pay our team. There you go. Okay. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's get to some more questions. I don't know why we can't copy the chat, David. Um, okay. Let's see. Hold on. I have this. Remember, if you do buy it today, be sure to send us at info at SIBOSOS.com your proof of purchase so you can get those two master classes. So Kathleen is saying food marble instructions say not to take antibiotics for a good reading. Does this include the anti-SIBO herbs and how can we best use the marble without stopping our treatment? Anyone? I think Josh, you should take that one. Go for Josh. <laughs> Um, so it, it kind of depends. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I'd love Claire Angus and Allison's thoughts on this too. Um, so for like, traditionally for formal diagnosis, like initial diagnosis, like um, generally you avoid being on any antimicrobials usually for two weeks. I would include an, um, herbal antibiotics in that or antimicrobials in that. What you often see though, the way... Um, uh, the way a lot of SIBO docs are using it is we're doing follow-up testing or, you know, is there resolution and things like that. Um, and that on purpose, I do, I personally do not tell them to stop on, on purpose. I want to know if you're actively at this level of symptoms right now on this herb or drug, what are your gas levels blowing? Um, so for me, that's how I use it. So I do use that two-week window. I would include herbs for formal initial diagnoses. Um, but not for follow-up, you know, did we get to remission, things, things like that. Cool. Yeah. I, um, think, I think that's very sensible. Right. Very smart approach. But I'll just say one other thing. Sometimes there are people who are, um, when we're, when we're talking about using it for SIBO testing, um, there's sometimes there are people who are on intermittent antimicrobials, antibiotics, due to a condition. And so we actually want to test them, at, but they're having symptoms. We want to test them as they are. So if this is a part of their life and mm -hmm. symptoms are a part of their life. So really the, to me, in terms of SIBO testing, the no um, avoiding anti antibiotics is for the initial test, just so you don't have um, low, falsely low levels. Um, but you can, you can certainly test if it's a normal part of your life. Okay, cool. Um, all right, let's see. Let me get back to our wonderful Q and A, the Qs and the As. Um, let's see, I think we kind of talked about that. Um, what happened, wait, this is it. What happens when you have high methane in the morning, but it drops throughout the day? Dr. Goldenberg, do you see that? And what does that like? Does that tell you anything as a practitioner? Yeah, I've got my thoughts. I'm really particularly curious on, on Claire's on this one. Um, so my okay, so um my understanding is that um like let's say you have dinner right before bed and like go to sleep, the GI system in a way kind of shuts down. 
And so what will happen in the morning is you might still be digesting and, or, and fermenting um, you know, food that you had previously. And, and if there are methanogens in the large intestine, they're making a lot of methane. And so you might blow a really high methane, even though you haven't had breakfast yet. And that's usually throws patients a lot. Um, and then over time that can get digested down unless you're eating a lot more food that, that flares it up. That would be my best guess. Does that make sense from the scientific perspective, Claire? Yeah, I think so. Um, I would agree with that. I think, yeah, eating a meal, a large meal late, often people would see quite high levels in the morning um, or probably another scenario if someone has a slower digestion um, they're st they're still seeing that kind of leftover from their previous meal, even if it wasn't that late. Um, so yeah, I'd agree. Okay, let's see here. Um... Okay. Hold on. Um, Anne says you guys are great. Uh, let's see. Okay, lots of just love. Thank you for the love in the chat. We're in the Q and A box too. We appreciate that. Um, so, what do you say for people who are trying to get a hold of lactulose and um, aren't able to because it's a prescription in the United States? Just use glucose. I would say use fructose because of the class we had with Dr. Jason Horlock. Um, and uh, for anyone who doesn't know, we did a free class with him back in February, and he did some in-office testing, and he he showed that fructose actually, uh, fructose plus lactulose, if you did one test then the other, was the best at discovering SIBO, and then next was fructose, and then lactulose, if you're just doing a single test. So um, that is an option for people in the U.S. who can't get lactulose because it's a prescription Okay, cool. Uh, can you use the, use the food intolerance kit with the original air? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. And that's the one that is the FDA cleared medical device. Is that true? Well, so we've got yeah, the... Just explain what happened with the FDA, because that's cool. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so we've got like two generations of device. Like we've basically got first generation hardware and a second generation hardware. And there's a medical and consumer version of both. So we've got Air 1 and Med Air 1. And so Med Air is a medical device. And then we've got Air 2 and Med Air 2. Um, and so, you know, the devices themselves are pretty similar, but, the, the, you know, the main difference is the medical device is classified as an FDA class 1 device. And, you know, it, like typically the clinician will be working with, uh, you know, a dashboard. And so so it's sort of, um, you know, like for, for, for all intents and purposes, um, Medair 2 and Air 2 are not that different, but, you know, it is certainly different from the clinician perspective and there's lots of reasons for that. But from, from the, from the patient's or the consumer's perspective, you know, they're, 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 they're very similar. Mm -hmm. so, and by the way, everyone, you are getting a replay of this. So if, if we're going too fast or whatever, don't worry, you will get the replay. Um, when it comes to the fructose and glucose, if you're ordering the, um, food intolerance kit as the extra or the combo, because that can be done as well. Um, you get those substrates, you get them in little packets, but I know we talked about how you can also very easily order those like on Amazon to get fructose, glucose, and what else can you get? Oh, you can get sugar, sugar alcohols, uh, you know, like um, mannitol and, and sorbitol you can get. And uh, I mean, you know, my local grocery store sells crystalline fructose in a bulk bin, you know, so you could just get it at <laughs> my local grocery store and, you know, glucose, you can get all kinds of things. Okay. So that, that's good to know. So it's not like, you know, lactulose is its own thing for getting a script, but these other substrates are, do have a lot more availability. Can I yeah. just say on, on, on that for like, if you wanted to do lactulose in my experience, um, since I can't prescribe lactulose in my state as a naturopath, um, I am having zero problems with patients reaching out to their primary care docs. I give them the dose that they need, which is 10 grams in a 15 mil solution. And I ask them to ask for like five or six refills. I'm like literally like zero issues because especially if you have constipation, it's like FDA approved for constipation. So it's, it's a very safe, cheap med and they come back with this bottle and they just pour out 15 mils every time they want to do a test. So um, whereas all these over the counter things are great. And I, and I use them too. Like 
I have, I am not seeing issues with people requesting. It's not like you're requesting some crazy antibiotic, like you're requesting a super safe med that you can pick up at your local pharmacy. And it's really easy. You just pour out 15 mils and do another 15 mils next time you want to do a formal test. Yeah. By the way, lactulose is, is prescription in the U S but it, to my knowledge in no, in no other country in the world. So, you know, it's, <laughs> it's just a, it's just a laxative, um, you know, in terms of its use as a substance other than for SIBO testing. And so that's why, yeah, Josh, great advice. Just asking your primary care. Can you, can you give me some lactulose? Like probably <laughs> no one will have an issue with it. No one. Yeah. yeah right. Just yeah. request the right gram amount so you could do have that. If you want to have a formal diagnosis, it's it's based on 10 grams of lactulose. Awesome. Okay, cool. Does Medicare cover this, Angus Claire? Oh. You, you go ahead, Angus. <laughs> yeah, okay. well, so so I mean for, for people in terms of insurance coverage, so the consumer device um can can you know is covered if people have FSA or HSA, which are there, those kind of like cards that some people have with their insurance where they can um, pay for certain things with right. that's covered um in terms of medicare uh, Medi uh you know medicare medicaid and and like kind of private insurance as well um you know the the, the medical device it would only be applicable there so the consumer device couldn't be covered by you know government or private insurance and that but that would also be bought via your clinician so you'd have to be working with your clinician to to you know uh, to, to access that. Okay. All right. Um, Lara is saying it sounds like it's most useful for lower levels of SIBO gases. So that would be methane and hydrogen because it does not do hydrogen sulfide. That is Jamelli Labs. And I know they're working on it, but that's the Trio Smart wonderful test. Would that be fair? So is it, so is it, Siobhan, I wonder if the person is, because um, we didn't explain, have anyone explained the difference between the fermentation score and the PPM? And I wonder if this person is thinking that it only goes to 10 on the fermentation score means PPM. So I don't know, Josh, you're nodding. Does somebody want to explain well, actually, that? Actually, Angus, can you address that? Because you showed us the two slides, the two yeah. pictures of the app. So you're developing something to help have a patient be able to um, interpret the fermentation levels well, in so a more if, useful way. If somebody wants to translate the, the fermentation score back to PPMs uh, at the lower levels, so up to about eight on the fermentation score, you know, a pretty good approximation is just to multiply the number by five. So we, you know, so for example, if uh, if you've got a fermentation score of one, that's actually five PPMs. If you've got two, 10 PPMs. And, you know, it goes up... Um, uh, you know, in in a, in a very clear way, up to about eight, but above eight. See, we we ha it can't go above ten, so we don't want it to just cap out at ten for for people who are getting high levels. We want it, people to be able to notice a difference if they're going from fifty ppm's to to a hundred ppm, because some people produce a lot of fermentation, and so it's good to be able to see, especially if if you might have SIBO and you're tracking to see are your levels going down on a day to day basis over time. Uh, you know, you want to see a difference between 100 and 80 and 70. Uh, so, so it, like when you're up above eight, those levels are typically pretty high. Uh, but there's a big difference between nine and 9.5. Uh, it gets a little bit more complicated, because, but, you know, fundamentally, if you, if you remember, you know, multiplying the number by five uh, works up until about eight. After that, you're up at very high levels. And then it's just really a case of, you you know, you're probably looking to bring those levels down over time. Okay. And then, and then, and then who can see PPMs? How can we so see the, the practitioner, the clinician, you know, anyone who's got access to the clinical dashboard can see the PPMs. So that's a great reason to work, to work with, uh, you know, to work with a doctor, to, you know, to work with somebody who, who can give you some, some advice as well on, what the, what that means and what they what how the information can be used. So okay, thing, one la one last yeah, thing is, is I saw a question come in early on. Somebody said something like, "Are you going to make it available for everybody to see PPM?" Somebody asked that question early on. 
yeah so, I mean, angus is, go is ahead. I've, I've asked this and i'm gonna be your interpreter for a second Angus. so they have this new thing that he showed on the app App that they're developing and bringing out in September, that it's not going to be spelled out as PPM. It's going to be that grade that goes up to 10. And whatever that level is, you multiply it times five. And that is akin to a PPM reading, not an exact. Is that true, Angus? Yeah, well, so the thing about when they're split out uh, into hydrogen and methane separately, it becomes very easy to just, if, you, if you're interested in the methane number, when they're separated out, just multiply it by five unless it's above eight. Uh, but you know, you know, it's not that common where you get really, really high levels of methane. Um, but it, like it's really common to, to, to get methane that might be 20 ppms, 40 ppms. That's really common. Um, and, and, but again, so when they're split out, it's much less likely to reach those higher levels. So, like if you have a fermentation of uh, score of four high on hydrogen and four on methane you know, you're up to eight, but when they're separated out, it's only four and four. So you've got a lot of headroom before you need to, uh, before it gets complicated. So yeah, so separating that it out just makes it easier for people to look at those levels individually and to be able to see it, you know, a greater range, uh, you know, more precisely, I guess. But I, and also just to add, I think the plan, well, we're hoping to show PPM to everybody as we're just getting an advice on it right now. And um, so that will likely be down the line. Um, but right now, this is yeah, that's kind of the next best thing. Oh, that's right. exciting. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So it's a little bit of a hybrid sort of half. Yeah. Uh, until baby now. step. Baby We're, step. Yeah, baby steps. They're always the best. <laughs> because that way you'll have most accuracy and most yeah. um, and least um, boo-boos um, mistakes. So it's a couple of people have been asking, like, let's say they have their um, air two, they're using it and they want to share their results with their nutritionist. So then can the nutritionist create an account um, with Food Marble and have access to the dashboard? Yeah, absolutely. So what we'd say is if, if you could, if you could ask your nutritionist to email us, uh, you know, um, they, they can use the email clin clin uh, clinical at foodmarble.com. And we'll we'll get in contact with the nutritionist, get them set up, and you know give them a demo of how of how to use the the interface to see the results. And uh, yeah, so so it's easy. We, we can we can get that set up once once they make contact with us. And I actually think um, a lot of dietitians that are using the dashboard already they get very excited when they use the um, Excel export function, so they can export the food diary and all the components. So they don't look, have to look at the, the handwritten food diaries and it's it's quite accurate and they can do quite quick analysis on it. So yeah, it's it's designed, you know, in mind of the dietitian from the food perspective. So yeah, I think they'd get a lot of benefit from it. Isabella is saying I'm a nutritionist and they were super fast. I set up my account with them. Cool. That's Great. fantastic. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. We try our best. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, okay, so we aren't going to go too long today. I just wanted to cover some of these things. And I wanted to say, first of all, thank you all so much for coming. For those of you who have come to these multiple sessions on Food Marble, and I hope that this is a tool that you will consider so that you can work with your practitioner and you can take the information that you've been learning from all the free webinars and the courses and the summits and all of that and, you know, help yourself to get well. And this is to me a beautiful step in hope and having feedback. I mean, I'll just speak for myself. There have been so many times, especially back in 2014 through 2016, where I was just like, I have no idea what's going on. I was just like very confused and frustrated and, and you know, was eating an apple a day because I thought I kept the doctor away, you know, all this, you know, all these false attempts <laughs> until I met Dr. C. Becker, who got me on track and, um, you know, really sa saved me from so much frustration and going down rabbit holes that were um, dead ends. And her algorithm that, you know, she uses with her patients, it is the foundation for the SIBO Pro course and the SIBO Recovery Roadmap and my book. Um, really is an answer and hope. And so this feedback 
is phenomenal. And I really appreciate your work, Angus and, and Claire, and Dr. Goldenberg and Dr. Seebecker. <laughs> it means so much to all of us as patients and Dr. Pimentel and all of the researchers at MAST program at Cedar sinai and, you know, at Jamelli Labs and Aero Diagnostics and Quintron and all of these people who are so devoted and the pr practitioners to helping all of us get well. And, you know, someone was just typing in that their doctor doesn't believe in lactulose. Okay, so my, my, I have a spiritual teacher and she says, you don't need to believe when you know. <laughs> so you need to just read the research or have that person read the research. This is not a religion. They don't have to believe squat. They just need to read the research. And for example, Dr. Goldenberg, you know, his, his buzzword for the day today is uh, evidence. And so um, I love that you were saying that during your bio, because that's what this can provide and just get into the research because it is there. So a couple of things. We have a new development um, at um, that we will share with you, which is a page from SIBOSOS that Dr. Seebecker and I have been working on, which is about testing. So we are going to put this webinar here on that page. We have interviews with Ani Pundit from Jamelli Labs about IBS Smart and Trio Smart. And then we also have, we have a couple other things on there too. And it's all about breath testing. So you're going to be able to be your own, you know, expert to go and work with your practitioner and also work in between your, your times for your appointments and really have an overview of what is offered in the marketplace today. So um, I just wanted you to be aware of that. And um, that's going to come out shortly. And we're excited about that. If you decided to pick up a food marble on uh, air two today, you do get the 16% off when you use our code. We do ask you to use our code. It helps us to continue to do free things for you over time. And also um, we will be giving you Josh's very in-depth presentation about food marble and his clinical experience and research is a three-parter. We didn't even, we weren't even able to show you the whole thing last time because it was so fabulous and so dense with incredible information. And then also Dr. Allison Seebecker's underlying causes. So these are two gifts with purchase that we set up for you. All you need to do is email us your um, proof of purchase to info at SIBO SOS, and we will send them out to you. So I think with that, we're going to wrap it up. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Thank you, Dr. Seebecker, for being my co-host. And thank you, Dr. Goldenberg, for agreeing to come on yet another q and <laughs> I appreciate that. And Claire, Dr. Short and Angus, thank you for your good works and wanting to support um, this community and um, keep up the good work. And it's beautiful to see how growth is happening there and how we're all going to be having even more and more aspects of support. So thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, so much. Thank you all. Thanks, guys. Okay, thanks, Clarissa. Bye. Thank you so much. So uh, I'll stay on for a second or two, and I'll let you all go, and we will get the replay out ASAP. Hopefully, uh, the plan is before end of day, so you guys can come on in and watch, and please do take advantage of that special. Thanks, guys and gals. All right. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye-bye. I know, Deb, their accents are fabulous, aren't they? I'm, I'm sure they're amused by ours. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, Linda, Laura, thank you. Oh, cool. Okay, great. Great. Laura saying that their practitioner um, is actually sharing the report with them. Um, is there a quick one page information source that a patient can provide their practitioner who don't believe and or know about SIBO? I would send them to SIBOinfo.com and there's a whole research section there that Dr. C. Becker works so hard on updating all the time. So, um, is, and this device is no problem in New York. Is that true? No, so, no. so no, it, I know in New York, there's an issue around lab tests, mm -hmm. but this, this is, this is more on the medical device side. So it's okay. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. What's the difference between the medical and consumer device? Uh, they're they're functionally the same. I mean, they they look different. They have different packaging, different uh, printed materials. Uh, the app is different for uh, from the the healthcare app is a bit different, but now functionally the same. Okay. The doctor can bill for reimbursement using the medical device, but they couldn't bill for reimbursement using the consumer device. They're probably. Yeah. So the consumer device is medical grade, so it's not a case of like one is better than the other or anything like that. Is there an option to download the app onto our desktop Mac? 
Well, no, but it, it it can be installed on an iPad. It might look a bit strange because the screen is so big, but uh, you know, if people are looking for uh, something that's easier to read, they could try it on an iPad or or they've got like an Android tablet or something like that. So Helen was having an issue, emailed um, Food Marble, didn't get a solution. So Helen, uh, let, I want to share, what's the customer service um, email, guys? It's hello at foodmarble.com is the, yeah. Hello the at foodmarble.com. What I have yeah. found is that their customer service is phenomenal. So, I mean, nobody's perfect, right? But mm -hmm. tell them I sent you. <laughs> yeah that yeah. should go far <laughs> <laughs> I, you know sometimes people will have an issue and sometimes it, it like you know it takes a bit of time to figure it out but like we're we're happy to work through issues with people okay yeah. great 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 um all right mahalo hi leah thank you is it available overseas catherine is asking yes yeah. so it's available in um north america so u.s canada uh europe uh including uk and Australia, New Zealand, um, right now. So they're, they're the countries we cover at the moment. Uh, Doug saying he has his on his iPad works great. M Mahalo Vanesh Sharma, so close to Sarna. I love my fellow Indian names. Um, I tried, I treat a lot of SIBO here in Hawaii. Maybe this was already asked. Can I track many different patients if I get them to purchase a device? So are there multiple? Yeah, you can uh, in the patient portal. Yeah, like exactly. They, they can have this patient. Yeah, portal, I should say. yeah, they, they can have multiple patients and, and, and it, you know, they can they can hide them over time if they don't want to see them all. So, OK. And then uh, Leah is saying, is, can they email the clinical team directly or do you have to go through customer service? Oh, no. Clinical at foodmarvel.com to get through to the clinical guys. Yeah. Nice. Nice. OK. Uh Cheryl, the, yes, you could see. So what if you don't have a practitioner? Would you be able to read and understand the results? Yes, you would. So that's mm -hmm. what we were showing those new updates to the app. Um, and yes is the answer. You, you know, we always- If they're unsure, we can definitely help. So a lot of people would contact us and we kind of help them go through the results. So we're happy to do that. That is not a substitute for medical advice. That is not a substitute yeah. for a visit with a practitioner. We can't say that enough. It's definitely all of our intention to have you get the best support you can have. This is sort of an adjunct to those appointments. And some people who are super you know, savvy patients who are like, this is my jam. I love apps. I love technology. I love feedback. This is a tool you can really use on a daily basis to give you that kind of live feedback. And there are some anecdotally who are using this to figure out if they have SIBO relapse. And you would do that as a challenge. There's a challenge um, section of the app and it's, it, it's pretty clear once you get in there. Um, it is not intended to be a replacement at this time for a SIBO breath test as a diagnostic tool. So, mm -hmm. however, you, you guys use your common sense, work with these great labs that are out there, use this as a tool, use it as you see fit. And um, uh, we hope you will use it because I think it is a really valuable device. And a lot of oh, yeah. a lot of help. Definitely, we, we do have a lot of users who are working with clinicians and practitioners to diagnose like, SIBO with the device. Like Dr. But, Goldenberg. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like yeah, a lot uh, of we can. Sorry, Claire, I was going to say we, we can suggest like if somebody's not sure if there's a practitioner in the area, we can we can help with that. Oh, as I well. love that. Yeah, I yeah, love that. So we reverse did. engineering it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we've created a program called Food Marble Connect. So connecting the our current consumers with practitioners who will help them interpret the results. Awesome. That's fantastic. OK, everyone, thank you so much. Thanks, guys. See you. Bye. Bye. Okay, we'll talk soon. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks so much. Thanks, Clarissa. Bye. Bye.